Welcome to the No Zone. I am Ch 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 Charlie. Yes, hello everyone, and welcome again. I am Janet. And I am Marara. Ha <laughs> ha. We are so excited that you're here with us on the No Zone again because, as you know, this is a place where we have a lot of fun as we learn. And today we have lots of fun up our sleeve, and we are ready to get started. Oh, of course we're ready to get started, so let's get into it. Our friends are waiting for us in the chill out zone. Let's go! Hello, everyone. Hello! Now, 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 why don't we say a big hello to everyone who's watching us at home? Hello! Now, we are going to have so much fun. Yes, we are, and we hope that you have a pen and paper ready to write down the buzzwords. But first, can we get somebody to tell us what today's show is all about? It's about clothes. Excellent. All right, now, what are the buzzwords? Shorts. Slippers. Handkerchiefs. Pullovers. Awesome! Now remember these buzzwords are very important, so try and listen out for them and see how many of them you can get. Now we are going to go and join our six friends and see what fun they're up to in their play shack. It's time for Playhouse. Rescue to the hideout. On your mark. Get it. Go. Go. You guys let me win again. No. Really fast. Super fast like Flash Gordon. Why did we even stop? She didn't get snacks and avocado for Mr. Zippo. Good idea. You know what? We should have a party. It's the weekend. Yes, my parents would agree to that. I've worked hard all week. I think we need to tell Mr. Zippo about this. Where's the door open? Hello, and how may I help you? Yes, Mr. Zippo. What's going on today? Well, if it's really, really you, spell the word... Um, handkerchief. Oh, oh. Yes, Luigi? H-A-N-D-K-E-R-C-H-I-E-F. Correct. Now I remember you. Come on in. Oh, come on in, guys. Come on in. Here you go. Oh, thank you very much, guys. That was so nice and thoughtful of you. Mr. Zeppo, if you didn't know who you were, then why did you say my name? Uh, uh... Mr. Zeppo, it's the weekend. We want to have a party. With music, dancing and food. Apart from that, we should dress up. Wouldn't that be cool? That would be way, way, way cool. But wait, how are we going to dress up? Does it matter? Of course it does. We should all wear our smartest clothes. I have a nice new pair of shorts and a pullover. Remember what I talked about? Swagger, I want to look like a rap star. But that won't match. It'll be untidy. Does it matter what we wear? I want to come in rainbow colored slippers. What? That's not Swagger. Not even one bit. I like them. It doesn't matter whether it's a short or a pullover, as long as it has color. But the outfit I wanted to wear is white. No way. I like Professor's idea. Thank you, Zach. Now, would you all go with my idea? No! Why not? Seriously! Wait, 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 wait! Wait! I wonder, guys! A world without colors. What would it look like? Thank you. 
more fun. It's a doll. I say, let's do a rainbow party, guys. Yay! Yay! Wait, you know why I like rainbows? Because it's made of different colors all together in one. And the differences in the colors is what makes this world so beautiful. I get to wear my rainbow colored slippers. I have a nice rainbow colored necklace. Oh my gosh, I also have a shirt which has many colors in it. This is gonna be so much fun. Mr. Zippo, what will you wear? Well, it'll be a surprise. Let's just say that where I live, they don't call me the Disco King for nothing. My clothes will be so bright that the sun will have to wear sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I'll dance like it's my birthday. All right, guys, start clapping. Hey, Luigi, take it home. Do the Mr. Zippo boogie. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do the Mr. Zippo boogie. Do the Mr. Zippo boogie. Do the Mr. Zippo boogie. I'm excited about the party. I like parties. Any excuse to have one or attend one. <coughs> What's up with you? You know what Mr. Zippo said? What if we could live in a world without color? Yeah. Then Luigi came up with the idea for a rainbow party. Yes, I remember the whole long conversation. What's wrong? Why couldn't I come up with that rainbow idea? I think I'm dull. Look at me. You aren't dull. Yes, I am. I am black and white and the rest of you are color. I don't even know if I have anything in my closet with color. Look, if it's bothering you that much, we won't come with anything. A party is about music, eating, friends. I don't know. I was bought for these new cool slippers. I think they're so pretty. Thank you. And it's a true celebration of color. Where's everybody else? Let's ask them a question. Let's see if they remember from yesterday. Spell handkerchief. H-A-N-D-K-A-C-H-E-F. No. You almost got it. Try again. H-A-N-D-K-E-R-C-H-I-E-F. Correct. Come in. Wait, where's Zach? We can't start the party without him. I thought he'd be here. He didn't tell me anything, although he did seem a bit down last night. I think I know why he might not come. What happened? He thinks he's dull. He doesn't have anything that has a rainbow color on it. Whoa! Now that is deeply disturbing. We can't start the party without Zach. Let's go find him. I feel bad. Don't worry, we'll find him. Hi guys. Sorry I'm late. I thought you weren't coming after what you said yesterday. If you felt you never had something, you'd have just come. I didn't want to be the odd one out. So I put my thinking cap on and came up with this. You look super cool. And you're the most colorful of all of us. Yeah, yeah Zach. Zach. So are you ready to party? Yay! From Playhouse, this is Quizzy Quiz. What was the password today? The password today at the Playhouse was handkerchief. 
Why did Zack not want to go to the party? Zack did not want to go to the party because he did not think he had colorful clothes to wear. That adventure was very interesting. Now, did you enjoy it? Yes! Excellent. I enjoyed it as well. And I also enjoyed Quizzy. His quiz was very cool today. That's right. And I wrote down some buzzwords. And I hope we also at least one buzzword in the adventure. <laughs> oh, we all know what that means. Teacher Pendo is waiting for us in the learning zone with a lot more fun. It's time for... Cool Ones! Hello everyone. Hello teacher Pendo. Welcome to Cool Words. In today's lesson we are learning to construct sentences using different ways. Now first of all, I will ask some of you to mime an activity. The rest of you should be ready to say what they have done. Oh, oh, oh teacher Pendo, teacher Pendo. Yes, Marara. Now what do you mean by the word mime? That's a good question, Marara. Now the word mime means pretending to do something, but acting with movement of the body and not using words. Do you all understand? Yes! Okay, good. Now Kimani, I would like you to mime like you're cleaning the blackboard. Okay, well done. So what has Kimani done? Yes, Tumanka? Kimani has cleaned the blackboard. Correct. Now notice that by saying has cleaned, we know that he has finished the action. He has completed the cleaning. Now next, Mulia, please mime putting on a pullover. Mm -hmm, very good. So what has Mulia done? Yes, Ansare? Mulia has put on on her pullover. Aha, uh -huh, excellent. Now next, Marara, please mime using a handkerchief. <laughs> okay, enough Marara. What has Marara done? Yes, Kimani? Marara has blown his nose using a handkerchief. Well done. And how do we spell the word handkerchief? Oh, oh, teacher Pendo. Yes, Marara. Can I try? Go ahead. Um, H A um, N D K E R C E I F. Okay, Mara, you missed out on the H. Oh, the, oh, let me try again. Okay. H A N D K E R C H. I-E-F. Correct. Now remember that when we pronounce the word handkerchief, the D is silent. Say after me, handkerchief. Handkerchief. Very good. Now on the board, I have two words. Put on. Now we use these words when we are referring to the act of dressing up. It is wrong to use wear to refer to the act of putting on clothes. When I say I am wearing a black skirt, it means that it's already on my body. It doesn't mean I am putting it on. Now on the table here, I have some items of clothing. I have a t-shirt, a short, slippers, shoelaces, and shoes. Now choose one item and construct a sentence using put on. Okay, so the first one, yes to Manka? I usually put on my shorts when it is hot. Aha, uh -huh, super. Someone else? Oh, did you bend off? Yes, Marara. Juma had to put on his black shoes and tie the laces. Excellent. Someone else? Yes, Mulia? During PE, Kamau put on his yellow t-shirt. Excellent. On Sarah, do you want to give us one? Yes. The floor was cold, so I put on my blue slippers. Excellent. Those are some very sensible sentences. Remember, putting on is the act of dressing. Why don't you try miming activities at home? Be sure to catch us later for more cool words. Right now, though, let's go find out what my speedy is up to. That's right. It's time for Out There. Hello, good people. I love bright colors, especially on my clothes. 
Mostly we choose what to wear according to the occasion or even according to the weather. When it's cold, you might find yourself looking for a pullover to keep yourself warm. But when it's hot, then some shorts, t-shirt, or some slippers might have to do. And some friends of mine have told me that today it's all about fashion and style. Come on, let's go inside and find out what it's all about. My friends here tell me that today they are models. They will be walking on the runway in front of hundreds of people as they showcase different clothes by different stylists. For the models to get ready, they have to look presentable to the stylist expectations. And so, besides fitting their specific clothes, they also get to have their makeup done. One of our stylists here has just told me that adding one little thing like chains, necklaces, or even shades in dressing can really change how you look. Wow, there is the red carpet. Let's go, Leon. This is really great, and it makes it look so easy. Hey, whom do we have here? Marlan is very confident as well, and he is all dressed up for cold weather. Look at the balls! <laughs> And for a relatively hot weather, I guess we can all borrow some tips from my friends here. What a good way to show the Kenyans how to dress stylishly, using the experts in this field. With all these people looking at you, it must take a lot of courage to walk here. It's time for all the stylists to join and stand by their models. They are all proud of their work. This has been one interesting show. I have loved it. Until next time, good people. Bye. Thank you, Maspidi. Your adventures are always so exciting. Yes, Maspidi is the best. And whenever I get bored at home, I think of Maspidi's adventures and I have a fun place to go and visit. That sounds like a lot of fun. Wait, how many places have you actually gone to so far? Oh, so many, so many. Um, let me see. Uh, uh, well, I've lost count, but not as many as my speedy has, of course. Well, of course. And speaking of which, it's time for us to go into our first game. Yes, it is. It's time to get our minds running and our bodies ready. That's right. It's the number pool game. Welcome, 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 welcome. It's time to dive into the number pool and have fun with numbers. Like my I said, welcome number team. Now today we are going to be dealing with subtraction. Now number team, the question is, are you ready? Yes! Okay, so what you have to do is roll the dice. Now once you roll the dice, 
<laughs> you have to subtract the two figures that are facing upwards. You subtract the smaller figure from the larger figure. Now in this case, that would be 12 minus three. That's right. Then run into the number pool and find the answer hidden amongst the balls and give that to Janet. Very true. Now after your turn, you have to go back to the number team, tag the next team member so that they can go up to Charlie and get to roll the dice. Now remember number team, you only have 30 seconds to roll the dice, figure out the solution, find the solution in the number pit, take the solution to Janet and tag the next team member like this. Now, if you get all the subtractions right, then you get to take away these fabulous books back to your school. Yes, you do. And not forgetting that Mara has very special prizes for each one of you. Now, if you hear this sound, you will know that you are out of time. And for you watching us at home, make sure you play along and see if you can keep up with our number team. So team, the question is, are you ready? Yes! Yeah! No, doesn't sound like you are. Let's hear it again. Number two, are you ready? Yes! Okay, let's roll the dice. Kimani, you're up first. Give it a nice good roll right over there. And he rolls and we have... Oh, oh. We have eight and three. So what is eight minus three? Five. 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 All five, right, five, find a five. Five, 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 five. Come on, come on, five, 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 There's five, one right five, behind five, you. Five, one five, right five, behind five, you. Five, yeah, five, yeah, five, yeah. Five, okay, give that to Janet. The next team member. All right, Tuanka, there you go. Roll and it. Tuanka rolls, and we have. We have eleven and four. What is eleven minus four? Seven. 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 Okay, go get a seven. Find seven. Five, seven. Look for a seven. seven. Look for seven. a seven. Find seven and give it to Janet. Find oh, seven. Come on, come on. Help, help her. All right, boys, there we go. Here, here, here. All right, give that to Janet. Give it to Janet. Tag the next person. Tag the next team member. All right, Leah. Here you go. Come on up onto the stage. Roll the dice. And oh, what do we have? We have nine and six. All right, so. What is nine minus six? Three. Find a three. Okay. Come on, come on. Find a three. Find the apple. Can you see the three? Can you see? Oh, that was very fast. I'm giving it to Janet. All right. I'm sorry. Roll it. And uh, we have oh, twelve minus six. What's twelve minus six? Six. Find a six. Right. Come on, there's a six right there. Find a six and give it to Janet. Give it to Janet. Give it to Janet. 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 All right. Oh. There you go, time is up. Now let's see how the team did. First person to roll the dice, Kimani, you rolled eight and three. Eight take away three is what? Five. Eight take away three is what? Five. You guys right? don't know this one. Nah, I'm, Come I'm, I'm on now. Where well, do you think they're right? Uh, very well, well done. Well, right. That's right. <laughs> Kimani, Clearly you did better than Charlie and Mara. Please keep up, guys. Tumanka, you were the second person to roll the dice. You rolled 11 and 4. 11 take away 4 is what? 7! 11 take away 4 is what? what is 7! You guys haven't decided yet. Let's figure this seven. one out. Seven? Oh, there oh, you go, wow. Tumanka! This is a very strong start, I have to say. Third person, Mulia. Mulia, you rolled uh, 9 and 6. Nine take away six is what? Three! Very easy, I must admit that one. Before they figure it out, very well done, Mulia. The last person to roll the dice on Sarah, you rolled 12 and six. 12 take away six is what? Six! Pretty easy. Are you sure you gave me a six? Guys, are you sure you gave me a six or a nine on Sarah? What do you think you're getting? A six? A I think it was a nine. I think it was a nine. No, it's a six. <laughs> all right, very well, uh, very well done, number team, for getting all the four sums correct. Come on, let's clap for them again. Yes. Team, you did very well. Those are four correct sums, which only means one thing. Kimani, come on up on the stage. Congratulations to you and your number team. These books belong to your school now. Show everyone at home the books. A round of applause. All right. And that is not all. You each get a storybook from me just for taking part. Come and get your storybooks. Come, come. 
show. <laughs> hey, you know, I, it just hit me that the most exciting thing about the No Zone is that nobody lives here empty-handed. I know what you mean. You know, one of these days, we should give the number pool to the school that comes to the No Zone. <laughs> then we'll never have it back. Yes. Now, right now, it's time for us to catch up with our girl, Dunia. And see... everybody welcome back to our world with me dunia today we are going to talk about a dangerous problem that some of us face in our homes that danger is fire when the sun goes down and it gets dark many of us use kerosene lamps to help us see kerosene is a liquid that catches fire very easily we use kerosene lamps to see what we are cooking in our kitchens we also use them to read and do our homework at night. So this light is very important to us for many reasons. However, kerosene in the house is very dangerous. There has been many stories of people burning their houses and even burning themselves because they have spilled the kerosene or the fire has got out of control. The smoke from the lamp is also bad for our lungs. So, I was wondering, how can we reduce this danger in our homes? I asked around and I found a solution. Solar power. Have you ever heard of solar power? Solar is a word to describe energy from the sun. Today, many people are starting to use solar power. Do you know why people prefer it to kerosene? Here is why. Firstly, solar power does not run out because the sun shines every day. Secondly, it is better for our health as there is no smoke to breathe in. Thirdly, it is safe. Fire burning from kerosene in lamps is very hot and can spread very quickly. And lastly, it's free power. We do not pay for the sun to shine. So once we have bought our solar panel, it is free energy. This panel collects sunlight, converts it into power and charges the lamp. Much cheaper than buying kerosene all year. Here is some maths I did for you. On average, I spent 40 shillings a day on kerosene for my lamp. There are seven days in every week. So that is 280 shillings per week. There are four weeks in one month. So 280 multiplied by four is 1,120 shillings. So every month I was spending 1,120 shillings on kerosene. There are 12 months in the year. So if I multiply 1,120 by 12, I was spending 13,440 shillings each year on kerosene. This daylight lamp costs a thousand shillings. It lasts about five years and runs on free power. So in five years, you will only spend a thousand shillings to light your home instead of 67,200 shillings for five years of kerosene. Just think what you and your family can do with that spare money. Wow! So solar power saves us so much money in the long term. With the same lantern, we can also charge our phones. How cool is that? And another great thing is... Solar energy doesn't harm our environment. So the more people that use solar power, the happier our world will be. Here is a story I want to share with you about solar power. Ready? Hey friend, yesterday I saw a human and I wondered, 
why he doesn't make use of the sunlight's amazing power the way we sunflowers do. You are right. These humans only use sunlight for growing crops, drying things or just warming up. Have they ever thought of doing something much greater with it? Hello, hello. I'm a delight solar light. I use my solar panel to collect light and turn it into electricity. That's why my panel needs to be directly under sunlight, just like your sunflowers. Wow, that's great! Do you charge yourself using sunlight all day and then shine brightly at night for free? Yes! Wow, thanks to Delight Solar Lights, our dark nights are now filled with bright light. Hooray! With a solar lantern, we can now study longer at night, finish our homework and get better grades. And you know what? There is no bad poisonous smell of kerosene and we don't strain our eyes. Do you want to learn more about solar lanterns? Send an SMS with the word zone and solar to the code 30606. I hope you like learning about the wonders of free and safe solar power and you will try and use it instead of kerosene when you can. See you next week for more adventures on our world. Bye! Thank you, Dunia, for always showing us very interesting things about our planet. I agree. Now, we must always remember that our planet is precious to us and we must always take care of it because if we take care of it, we'll always have a place to live. You're right, Charlie. The animals know it and now our friends at home know it too. Right now, though, we have to go on a short break, but we'll be back for more fun and learning. In cool words and spell it. And so much more. So don't touch your TV. We will be right back right here on the... Nerdzone! Welcome back to the No Zone, the place where we have lots of fun as we learn. Now, before we go too far, let's remind ourselves what the buzzwords are. Shorts. Slippers. Handkerchiefs. Pullovers. Brilliant. Now, all these words teach us more about clothes. I think I know what that means. Teacher Pendo wants us to come into the learning zone. Yes, Teacher Pendo is waiting for us with more number one on... Hot, hot Numbers! <laughs> hot, 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 hot Numbers! Hello everyone. Hello Teacher Pendo! Welcome to Hot Numbers. Today we are going to look and understand the Kenyan shilling. Oh, Teacher Pendo. Yes, Marara. I was really wondering how comes you have all those coins and notes on your table. Okay, I am going to use this money on my table to teach you the different kinds of money and its value. Now on my table, I have five different coins. And of course, a coin has two sides. Yes, Teacher Pendo. And I know one side is called the heads and the other side is called tails. Okay, in some way you are right, Marara. Now on one side of the coin, we have the head of one of the previous presidents of Kenya. And on the other side, we have the value of the coin and a picture of the coat of arms. Teacher Pendo? Yes, Marara. Is the coat of arms the one with my family members? Because I can see two lions. And I can also see how much your, your coin is. What? It's up, up, up. It's with a 10 shillings. Aha, uh -huh, you're right, Marara. I am holding a 10 shilling coin. Now, let's see if you can recognize the coins I have here with me. I want us to talk about this coin. Now, this is a 50 cent coin. Wait, did you bend, huh? Yes, Marara. Is that the smallest coin? No, it's not, Marara. There are also 5 cents and 10 cent coins, but they're not very common, and you need a lot of them to buy anything. In fact, you need 20 five cent coins just to make one of these. Okay, so what coin is this? 
Yes, Zombo? One shilling. That's right. I am holding a one shilling coin. Now, the one shilling coin can either be silver in color or it can be copper. Okay. Now, what coin am I holding? Yes, Nakesa? Five shillings. That's right. Now, I am holding a five shilling coin. I need five one shilling coins to get five shillings. So I will need five of these to get five shillings. Okay, now I have another coin that is bigger than five shillings. Which coin do I have? Yes, Wanjiko? A ten, a ten shilling coin. Excellent. Now two five shilling coins equal one ten shilling coin. Okay. And we have this last coin here. Which coin is this? Yes, Kuruga? 20 shillings. Aha, uh -huh, that's right. Now, we are quickly going to look at the coins again. I will start from the one with the least value to the highest. So the lowest coin is 5 cents followed by 10 cents, which are very rare and which we don't have with us here. And then the 50 cents. Now remember these three, the 5 cents, 10 cents and 50 cent coins are not commonly used. Okay, we then had the one shilling coin, five shillings, 10 shillings, and 20 shillings. Well, Teacher Pendo. Yes, Marara. I think we are missing a coin because these are not all the coins we have in Kenya. You're totally right, Marara. I had another coin. Oh, here it is. Okay, so we have a 40 shilling coin. So two 20 shilling coins, two of these make a 40. Okay, so I still have more money on my table and this time we will not look at coins. We are going to look at money in the form of paper. Teacher Pendo? Yes, Marara. Paper money? Yes, Marara. I have paper money. Now, this paper is of very good quality. The paper money has more value than the coins. Now, just like the coin, the paper money has on the front the head of a previous president and a different picture on the back depending on the value of the money. Now, the value of the money is very clear. Now, who can tell me how much I am holding? Yes, Zombo? 50 shillings. Aha, very good. And what note am I holding now? Yes, Nekesa? 100 shillings. Excellent. What about this? Yes, Wanjiko? A 200 shilling note. Very good. And this one? Yes, Kuruga? A 500 shillings note. Excellent. And finally, what note is this, Marara? Teacher Pendo, yes. that is a 1,000 shillings note. You are right. Well done, everyone. Now, that was an introduction to money. We need to know and understand money. Next week, we will continue looking at money. Right now, though, it's time for us to get creative. That's right. It's time for Creative Zone. Hello. Welcome to Creative Zone. Today, we'll be making some art. Imagine if you could design your own clothes. Today, we'll be doing the same, but only in miniature form. First, we will need the clothes, and I have a nice baby trouser here, a vest, and a bit of extra cloth maybe you might need to use, okay? I have my clean sheet of paper and I want to trace out my vest and my shorts. I will trace it out here. And there we have it. And I'm going to do a cutout. And this time I'll use a scissors. Remember again, when you're using scissors, it can be dangerous. So please ask an adult to help you cut it out.
And there we have my nice miniature vest. For the trouser, I'm going to use a different color paper, again to create contrast. Or well, just like when you dress, you mix and match. And I'm thinking blue can be a good color. And there we have a nice miniature trouser. Just to make it more ambitious and also to decorate it, we're going to add a bit of fabric and some paint just to make all the clothes become decorated. And remember, every time you use the scissors, it can be dangerous. So please ask an adult to help you with the cutting. I'm making a red ribbon. And I'm going to use my glue to paste it on. Yep, with a little red ribbon on the vest. For the trouser, I'm going to use some paint to make it look hip or a bit more And here we have our cool trouser. With nice colors, which matches with our warm, bright top with its ribbon. So, what better way to display I think we can use a washing line. Voila, and that's our display for our personally designed clothes. So let's see what you can make. And that's all the time we had today, and I hope you had fun. Bye bye. You know, Creative Zone was really, really cool today. <laughs> that's right, Charlie. Oh, Janet, I have a question for you. <laughs> can right. you spell today's longest buzzword? Uh, which is? Handkerchief. Of course I can. Ma, the question is, can you? Uh, 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 uh well, Charlie, uh, uh well, yeah, uh -huh. I can. <laughs> Let me try. Um, H A N D K. Is the K silent Boom, in handkerchief? I, <laughs> Wait, so. I, 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 I could do it in Teacher Pendle's class, but I, I guess I need some more time to practice. <laughs> yes, you definitely need some time to practice, but don't worry because our friends are going to help you. And it's time for us to jump into the spotlight and see how good we spell. It's spell it. Animal, animal. chapter, building, narrow, building. respect, respect. deep, vegetable, work, work. work. Welcome to Spell It! Now this is the place where we play with our words and our letters. Wanjiku, Zombo, Nekesa, and Kuruga. You are about to step out of the shadows and into the spotlight to compete for the title of today's No Zone Spelling Champion. Now, the winner of today's competition will win their school a Nozon Dictionary and a very special prize for themselves. Now, each contestant has just 25 seconds to spell correctly as many words as they can. If you would like a word repeated, simply say repeat and the word will be repeated for you. Are the rules clear? Yes. Are the rules clear? Yes. Now, all of today's words will be coming from our topic of... Mara? Clothes! Excellent, so it's something we all know about. I'll start with you, Wanjiko. Come on down and step in the spotlight. Clothes, 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 clothes. Wanjiko, your 25 seconds of spelling starts now. Big. B-I-G. Old. O-L-D. Vest. V-E-S-T. Coat. C-O-A-T. Blouse. B-L-O-U-S-E. Shorts. S-H-O-R-T-S. Black. 
B L A C K. Pants. P A N T S. Shoes. S H O E S. Sweater. S W E A T E R S. Gumboot. Oh. Well done, Wanjiko. Well done. Zombo, you're up next, so come on down and step in the spotlight. Clothes, 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 clothes. Zombo, your 25 seconds of spelling starts now. Red, R-E-D. Tie, T-I-E. Soft, S-O-F-T. Blue, B-L-U-E. Scarf, S-C-A-R-F. Shirt, S-H-I-R-T. White, W-H-I-T. Wear, W-E-A-R. Pink. P I N K pullover P L P U L O V E R cotton C O T O N Oh well done Zongo well done Nekesa you're up next come on down and step in the spotlight Nekesa your 25 seconds of spelling starts now hat H E R T dry D R Y Wash W A S H Long L O N G Smart S M A R T Dress D R E S Double S Green G R Double E N Wool W Double O N Sandals S A N D L E S Handkerchief Ruga, it's your turn now, so come on down and step in the spotlight. Clothes, 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 clothes. Kuruga, your 25 seconds of spelling starts now. Cup. C U P. New. N K N A Y. Knit. N E A T. Pair. P E A R. Skirt. S K I R T. Socks. S O K I R T. S O C K S Brown B R O Y N Small S M A Double L Very well done to all of you. Charlie? Yes. Please reveal the results. All right. Now this is a very special edition of Spell It, which means we will only be announcing the top two. Now Everybody did very well, but first and second is between two very strong spellers. So I will start with Wanjiko. Yes. Wanjiko, you added an S onto sweaters. It should have been sweater, which is what Janet asked you to spell. That means it should have been S-W-E-A-T-E-R. Nonetheless, you spelt one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine words correctly. Let's give a round of applause. Well done. The other person in the top two is Zombo. Now, Zombo, you spelt very many words correctly. However, you forgot and spelt white without an E. It should have been spelt W H I T E. Nonetheless, you spelt 10 words correctly. <laughs> Which only means one thing, that the winner of today's nose and spelling competition with a strong 10 word spell correctly is Zombo. Congratulations Zombo, you are today's nose and spelling champion. Here is your dictionary. Show everyone at home your dictionary a round of applause! Well, congratulations Zombo and all of you for spelling so many words correctly. And for that, you each get a storybook. So come on up and get a storybook. Come, come. Now that was a very intense round of spell it. I know what you mean. That's probably the strongest round of spell it we've seen in a long, long time. I think we deserve a break. Yes, now it's time for us to join Stupendo on Cool Words.
Welcome back to Cool Words. Now on the board, I have some sentences that tell us what certain people have done. Your task is to fill in the gaps in these sentences using words that we came across in our first part of our lesson. For example, what has the tailor made? The tailor has made a dress. Now each of you will get a chance to answer a question. Do you all understand? Yes! Very good. So we will start with Kimani and then Tumanka and then Mulia, Onsare and finally Marara. Okay, so my first sentence. What has one boy bought? One boy has bought a handkerchief. Very good. Has bought a handkerchief. Remember the D is silent. Very good. Where have Tasha and Lima put the clothes? They have put the clothes in a box. Mm -hmm. Very good. They have put the clothes in a box. Excellent. What has Juma washed? Juma has washed his socks. Mm -hmm. Has washed his socks. All right. What has he found? Yes, I'm sorry. He has found his shoelaces. Excellent. He has found his shoelaces. And finally, Marara, what has Kola put on? Um, he has put on his long jacket. Very good. He has put on his long jacket. Well done, everyone. You've all worked really hard today. Now, why don't you all practice writing sentences about actions that you have completed? Now, be sure to join us soon for more cool words. But right now, it's time for us to find out what today's story is. It's story time. Welcome. Today I shall read you a very interesting story known as The Woolly Tail. It was a very cold night in the highlands and the wind howled through the hen house. The shamba boy came out to check on the animals before he went to sleep. As he shone his lantern into the hen house, the fussy mother hen spoke. We need more hay on this terrible night, for my chicks are nearly frozen, she said. Now, the shamba boy was not paid well by his employer. He could count the shilling coins he was paid in across the palm of one hand. The shamba boy wore shorts because he couldn't afford trousers, and he didn't have shoes to keep his feet warm, or a pullover to put against the night chill. If there were extra hay, I would use it to soften my own hard bed, he told the hen. Just lay your eggs and keep quiet. The mother hen felt sad for the boy, but sadder still for her chicks. She thought about the shamba boy's words, and by morning, she had an idea. As the sun rose, the mother hen called the sheep. Sheep! Could I buy some of your wool in exchange for my eggs? She asked. The ship agreed, and over the next few nights, by the light of the moon, the mother hen secretly gathered together spindles of wool, spinning them directly from the ship around twigs with her feet. It is a little known fact that cows are in fact very good at knitting. So on the fourth night, the mother hen asked the cow to teach her how to knit. The cow taught her well and gave the hen a set of knitting needles made of bamboo. With these, the hen knitted a beautiful blanket and several pairs of perfect little slippers for her chicks. But the shamba boy had no eggs to take to his employer. Hen, why do you not lay? He asked. I am as cold at night as you, and now my employer refuses to pay me because there are no eggs. The shamba boy took the hen away from her chicks to another part of the farmyard, where he tied her legs with his handkerchief so she could not move. You will not see your chicks again unless you lay, said the shamba boy. If there are no eggs in the morning, I will take you to the market and sell you so I can use the coins I am paid to buy a better hen. 
That night, the mother hen clucked and could not lay for fear of what would happen to her poor chicks. They would surely freeze without her warmth, even if they had put on their perfect little slippers. In the morning, the shamba boy went to the hen and found her as still as stone. He felt ashamed, believing that he had caused her death. But as he picked her up, he was surprised to see a perfect little knitted slipper fall out from under her wing. The hen began to revive as she felt the warmth of the shamba boy's body. The boy looked at the slipper with amazement. It was so beautiful. And so it happened that the shamba boy did take the hen to the market and the hen never went back to the shamba, but neither did the boy or the hen's chicks. The shamba boy sold the beautiful knitted goods that the hen made at the market and used the notes that they earned to house and clothe them all in comfort and warmth. The end. I hope you enjoyed the story and I hope to see you again. Goodbye. From the story zone, this is Queasy Quiz. Why didn't the Shamba boy wear shoes? The Shamba boy did not wear shoes because he could not afford them. What did Mother Hen sew up to get wool? Mother Hen swapped her eggs for wool. You know, I really enjoyed that story. It was great. That's right. And I especially enjoyed Quizzy Squeeze. Did y'all enjoy? Yeah! So did I. You know what, I actually wonder what story we're going to have next week. Well, we will have to tune in next week to find out. What, what are you saying? Is it over now? Oh, no! And I was really, really having fun! Well, don't worry, Mara. We were also enjoying ourselves, but the Nose One will be back next week. Yes, it will. Thank you to you, our studio guests, for coming through to hang out with us today. And for you at home, thank you very much for joining us. Now, be sure to join us next week for more laughs, more fun, and more learning. That's right. So, come on, everyone. Let's say goodbye. Bye! Bye.